So welcome to this another video about Colors Fractaler and Zoomasem. This time we're working with a soundtrack. So we start Audacity to inspect our soundtrack file, which is a music piece that I wrote myself several years ago. So as you can see in this waveform, there are times where events happen, transitions in the soundtrack. They happen to be on the minute marks for the most part. So here's what it sounds like. So we'll be synchronizing the video to these events in the soundtrack. So now we can start Callus Fractala and work on the fractal zoom exploring the fractal to make the video so first thing to do is enable derivatives and jitter which gives higher quality with analytical distance estimation then we'll choose a hybrid formula Mandelbrot then burning ship for one iteration then two iterations of Mandelbrot set again That gives a more interesting fractal than the standard Mandelbrot. We'll enable analytic distance estimation colouring. So that makes the details a bit finer. Zooming in you can see the structures are similar to the Mandelbrot set and similar to the burning ship. We'll make a custom bailout radius for the binary decomposition colouring that we're going to use in a second. So the main new feature of this version of Callus Rectala is the OpenGL colouring dialog. You can use OpenGL shader fragments to colour the fractal. So now you can see a new binary decomposition colouring of this fractal. It looks a bit misshapen in places but that's because of the way this fractal works this hybrid fractal we can make the window a little bit bigger so we can see that and when you change the window size you have to match up the image size as well because otherwise it gets a bit stretched so you can interact with the shader by changing the in variables in the colouring dialog at the interior colour. So we zoom in a bit trying to find somewhere interesting. So let's try nearer the mini set. See if we can find something here. There's one little speck of pink. It's a bit distorted so we can use Newton zooming with automatic skew to make it more regularly shaped. So that centers on there and now you can see it's shaped like a normal mini Mandelbrot set. Let's try a different coloring. Let's try the rainbow fringe. So this one's got different coloring based on distance estimate. You can edit the shader, you don't have to stick with the imported ones, you can say so change the first value to 0 0.1 instead of 1 I click the apply button Not, doesn't look so much different you change the other multiplier of the length value and, oh, still made a mistake if it typo this one, yeah that makes it much more colourful and if it's too colourful you can change it again yeah that's a bit more comfortable so now you can zoom in with the colouring applied you don't need to do anything special to get the open geo colouring to work with your modified zoom level you can try and find another mini set here 
here's somewhere more promising you can see when that takes more than one reference there's usually something interesting there so you can there should be another mini in the middle of here with the doubling of features yep tricorn mini so we can zoom into some of the features around it is guaranteed to be guaranteed to be a mini near the center of these kind of nodes in the embedded julia set features so we can speed up zooming by using newton refs and zooming to automatically zoom to the center of the feature so here we have it You can change the colouring at any time. More contrast between the fractal and the background. So, for the next step, it's a bit slow with this resolution. So, I'm going to disable OpenGL. and make it disabling OpenGL gives a slightly faster preview because the pixels are updated as they're rendered rather than waiting for the reference to be finished so you can see this lo-fi preview very quickly now we'll set the window size to a wide strip 9 to 1 aspect ratio set the image size to match low image size for the moment and we'll enable exponential strip exponential map so this is a ring wrapped around the center of the factor you can use the page up key to zoom in page down to zoom out so what we want to do is zoom in until the bottom edge is all one color which will mean that the zoom ends at the, inside the fractal Yep, that's about right. So now we can enable OpenGL again. sRGB is a minor tweak, it doesn't make too much difference in this colouring, but with other colourings it can give you different effects. Now we set the image size large. You have to check that ZoomSM can support your large things before rendering a full thing, because otherwise you might be disappointed. So always do a small test run first. We're now able to open CL for the final rendering, which uses the graphics card, which can be a big speed up in some circumstances. And we need to set the channels in the EXR files we're going to save, because we don't want to save any data that we don't need. So save space and save time by disabling all the ones apart from the distance estimate because the rainbow fringe colouring only uses the distance estimate and now we can store the zoom out images select a folder that I prepared earlier to save the file in we've got the size set already so you need to save EXR files and then you can launch the renderer into the folder and then this is sped up a hundred times because watching something render for 24 minutes is a bit boring so that's done now we can make a smaller copy of each of these huge strips to make interactive editing in ZoomSM much more ergonomic So you can use a bash shell for loop to process all the images. So this works quite quickly because they don't have so much data in them. 
because we disabled the channels that we didn't need. And you can see there's about 90, 92 fold zoom levels. So now we can start zoom assemble. First time I did this, it, I forgot to record the sound, so load the demo that I recorded earlier and I'll walk you through what I've set up. So the key thing to note in the color tab below is that is we've loaded the kf.kfr file that we saved for rendering the video. We'll use the smaller keyframes for interactive use because the large ones are a bit make it a bit jerky and we'll reduce the resolution temporarily to make it smoother 60 frames per second now so here are the keyframes that I set up earlier the waypoints so at the start it's zoomed out then at 75 seconds it's at the mini then at 180 seconds it's the next mini and then at 240 seconds it's at an embedded Julia set and at 300 seconds near the end it's at the final mini and then right at the very end it's inside the mini so you, it put, I set up the keyframe so it pauses at the mini and then starts moving when the soundtrack kicks into the next section Similarly for the next mini. And the uh, embedded Julia set. You can see that it slows down and pauses just before the next section of the music. And at the end it Just turn the sound off right in the end. So then we go back to the large keyframes. You can see you have to maybe rewind to get them to load properly. So you can see they're using about two gigabytes of video memory. That's so fine. We can set the resolution back to 4K. And we can record the output video frame rates are uh, bit rates all okay so you can don't want to overwrite the one we recorded earlier and then you can hit the record button and it will render the video so this is rendering at 300 times faster than real time you probably want to disable your screensaver because ZoomSM can stop when the screensaver kicks in